What's up, everybody? Man, wasn't last week awesome? We all got to get together, most of us from the comfort of our own homes, and have service. I even saw pictures online of Bayside families wearing their serve shirts and welcoming their kids into the living room to watch service. That is so cool. Nothing can stop the church. That means you, and you, and you, and me from getting together to worship our God. I can't think of a better way to get our service started than with a little worship. So get up, come on, stand on your feet. Let's get ready to show God how much he means to us. Hey, have your parents take a picture or a video of you during this next song and post it in the comments below. Let's see who has the best moves.
We will rock that scripture. scripture man i can't wait to see your photos in the comments below let's see we've worshipped we've had rock that scripture and now it's game time and girls, moms and dads, I hope your eyes are sharp. I hope you're awake because I got lightning fast fingers, man. So here's the game. It's called Keep Your Eye on the Ball. I'm gonna place this ping pong ball, come here now, hold still, under one of these cups, and then I'm gonna mix them up. The challenge is, can you keep your eye on the ball and guess where it landed at the end? Can you do it? Do you think you can do it? If you think you can do it, give me a high five right now. Come on, digital high five. Okay, good, let's go. I think it's time to get started. Are we ready? I'm gonna start in the middle. This is round one, so I shall take it easy on you, okay? But don't think that in round two and round three, I'm not gonna get crazy, all right? So here we go in the middle. Here we go. He's so fast. He's so quick. He's as fast as lightning. Keep your eye on the ball. Where did it land? Was it this one? This one? Or this one? I'll give you five seconds to guess. Five, four, three, two, one. Did you think it was this one? Ah, there it is. I bet you a bunch of you guys got it right. Well, let's try round number two. We'll start in the middle. Ready, set, go. Come on, he's so quick. He's so quick. Woo, 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 woo. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Woo, 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 woo. What happened? What happened? What happened? What happened? You lost it, didn't you? You lost it. Which one do you think it is? Honestly, I don't know which one it is, but I think it could be here. No. Did you think it was the middle? How about this one? There it is. All right, time for the final round. Super fast this time. One, two, three, go. All right. Which one do you think it's in? This one? Who thinks it's in this one? Who thinks it's in this one? Ah, gotcha. So how did you like that game? I said, how did you like that game? Come on, let me hear ya. Come on, let me hear ya. Nice.
ways, man. I like it when you get all crazy like that. So, let me hear you say love. Come on, let me hear you say it. Love. Let me hear you say your. Come on. Let me hear you say friends. Come on. Let me hear you say love your friends. Say it again. Love your friends. Nicely done. You know, that just happens to be our bottom line this week. Let me hear you say it again. Love your friends. Love your friends. You know, I really have enjoyed our King of Hearts series this month and getting to learn all about David's life. I hope that you've enjoyed it too. So far, God has allowed David to be anointed by the prophet Samuel and to slay the Philistine giant, Goliath. You know, David lived his life by faith and God blessed him for it. Last week, we learned about how God fights for us when he helped David, who was just a teenager, defeat a huge giant named Goliath. So at this point in the story, David had basically become a famous dude. Everyone knew him as the great warrior who slayed the giant Goliath. You know, King Saul appreciated him so much that he had David come and live with him. It was while living with King Saul that David would meet his best friend. Let me hear you say, love your friends. Come on. Love your friends. Let's check out this great video that tells all about the incredible friendship of David and Jonathan. Check it out. This is Jonathan, who was the son of King Saul, and Jonathan was heir to the throne. He was also a great warrior in Israel's army and known to be a man of action. When it came to defend Israel from the Philistines, Jonathan and his armor bearer went on the attack and won a battle for the entire nation, instead of staying back to take a defensive posture as the king had instructed. This is David, a young shepherd boy who was anointed by God to become the next king. Very similar to Jonathan, he was also known to be a courageous man, standing up for himself and his nation. After defeating Goliath the giant, David became a hero and was brought before King Saul, where he first met Jonathan, and they immediately became friends. Jonathan was so impressed with what David had done, and an immediate bond was forged between them. After David's heroic encounter with Goliath, it was easy to see why he became such good friends with Jonathan. To name a few similarities, they both had courage and took the initiative to act. They had great faith in God's power and they thought and acted alike. Jonathan became one in spirit with David and he loved him as himself. They were best friends. Jonathan, out of his deep love for David, made a pact with him and showed him that by giving David his robe and weapons. Jonathan believed something King Saul refused to accept. Because of Saul's disobedience to God, he had chosen a man after his own heart to become the next king of Israel. Although Jonathan was Saul's son and therefore next in line to be the king of Israel, God chose someone outside of his family to be the next king. So as Jonathan gave his sword and belt away, he had such a good heart and knew that David must be the one who God anointed to be the next leader of Israel. There was no envy or jealousy in Jonathan's heart towards David because true friends want God's will for each other. When you're a good friend, you want the best for your friend and Jonathan was 100% for the success of David. It wasn't a competition. Jonathan was fully committed to the relationship with his best friend. From that time on, David was successful in all that he did, and God's people loved him. Saul liked him at first, but soon, became very jealous and angry with David because of all the recognition he received. Afraid that David might replace him as king, Saul tried to kill David a couple of times, but nothing worked. David came out of every situation alive and well. King Saul told Jonathan and all his servants to get rid of David, but Jonathan decided to warn his friend. 
Jonathan was forced to choose between loyalty to his father, who was doing wrong, and David. Jonathan went to his father, King Saul, and tried to talk him out of harming David. For a time, David was safe from King Saul's plans. But not long after, the king's jealousy and anger came back as he tried to kill David again. David got away, and his loyal and honest friend Jonathan came to help and protect him. Jonathan tried to talk his father out of hurting David one more time, but this made King Saul even more angry, and he was convinced David needed to be gone. Jonathan, don't you know that as long as David is alive, you'll never be king? He must die. But father, David has done nothing wrong, Jonathan replied. Then Saul threw his spear at Jonathan, trying to kill his own son. Jonathan was angry and sad that his father would not let his friend go. And he knew that David would have to go into hiding and run from King Saul. Jonathan met David one last time to say their goodbyes. David was so grateful for the incredible friend he had in Jonathan and showed that by bowing down before him. They hugged and cried together, but David cried the most. Jonathan told David to go in peace and they had a special bond in God's name. Then Jonathan returned back to town and David left and lived a life on the run until it was time for him to become the next king of Israel. Even though they were separated, the two were the best of friends and were an encouragement to one another. Who knows where David could have ended up if it weren't for his good friend, Jonathan. Jonathan was willing to risk his life to try and save David. Jonathan told David he would do anything to protect him. Jonathan said, if I learn that my father plans to harm you, I'm gonna warn you. You know what? I think it's time for a Bible battle. Bible battle. Get ready to look it up. Do you have your Bibles ready? Here we go. Everybody look up. Luke chapter six, verse 31. Go, go, go. Great job, everybody. Let's all read that scripture together. Here's what it says. Do for other people what you want them to do for you. That's in Luke 6:31. Ah, the golden rule. We should always think about this scripture when we are with people. I know I like to be treated fairly and with respect, so I try my best to treat others fairly and with respect, especially my friends. Let me hear you say, love your friends. Come on. Love your friends. You know, God helped Jonathan to make sure that David would survive to become the king. Having a great friend is truly a blessing. The greatest friend we could ever have is Jesus. Much like Jonathan, Jesus was willing to die to save us. Not only was he willing, but that is exactly what he did. When Jesus died for our sins, he gave us a life that never ends in heaven. God is so good. Not only did he send his one and only son to die for us, but he also puts amazing friends in our lives to help us. In the same way, we must be sure to love our friends when they need us too. Can you think of someone in your life that could really use a good friend right now? Show them some love, man. Maybe you can write a letter or make a phone call or have parents help you send a text. Jesus said we should treat the others in our lives the way we would like to be treated. So let me hear you say it one more time. Love your friends, come on. All right, everybody, let's pray. God, thank you so much for all the things that you do for us. You've blessed us in so many ways. Thank you for the people that you've put in our lives, God. Thank you for the friends that you've put in our lives. Help us to always treat others the way that we wanted to be treated, God. Thank you so much for Jesus and what he did for us on the cross. It's in his name we pray, and everyone says, Amen. All right, guys, it was so good to hang out with you today. Make sure you comment below and let us know what your favorite part of the Bayside Kids service was today, all right? See you next time. Digital fist bump.